I'm also getting married on September 10th, starting at 1 p.m., I mentioned casually. My younger sister's eyes twinkled with a mischievous glint as she smirked. Oh, same day and time, huh? What a coincidence. But you're only having a small family affair, right? I heard you're keeping it under a hundred guests. That's such a shame. We're going all out, inviting everyone we know, from family to friends and colleagues. Have your little event if you must. I bit back my initial response and chose my words carefully. I'm Sarah, 30 years old, and I work full-time. I met Thomas, who's three years older, through a mutual friend. After dating for two years, we recently registered our marriage. Thomas works in the food industry and is genuinely kind and sincere. We're planning our wedding for next month, and most of the details are already in place. While many of our friends are opting for grand celebrations, we've decided to keep ours small and intimate, just with family. I prefer to avoid a mix of my parents and sister with my friends and colleagues. My parents have always favored my sister Melanie, who is three years younger and undeniably more attractive, something I can admit objectively. Melanie has always been their favorite, and I just wanted to avoid any awkwardness. With her striking eyes, long lashes, delicate features, and fair complexion, Melanie caught the attention of several talent agencies and worked as a teen model during her school years. My parents adored her and frequently compared her to me. Sarah, you have such a plain face. It's hard to look at you, they would say. Sarah, you lack charm. Melanie is like an angel, unlike you. They showered Melanie with new clothes and toys, indulging her every whim while I was denied opportunities to explore hobbies. Melanie enjoyed piano, ballet, swimming, and more, but her interest was fleeting, and our parents never reprimanded her for it. Even when she failed tests due to her carefree attitude, they encouraged her, while I was harshly criticized for merely average grades. I often thought to myself, I wish you hadn't had me at all, every time they voiced how they wished I had never been born. I wasn't allowed to respond as my parents criticized me and showered Melanie with affection. Unsurprisingly, Melanie grew up pampered and entitled, retaining her beauty but developing a cruel streak. We don't look alike at all, sis. Your plain face is so pathetic, she would taunt, constantly putting me down. I was reluctant to introduce my parents and sister to Thomas or his family, but my in-laws understood the complicated dynamics and didn't push. Still, my parents insisted on a meeting, so we arranged a joint family dinner. On the day of the dinner, I was anxious as my parents, Melanie, and Thomas's parents gathered. Distracted by the fear of any potential mishaps, I barely enjoyed the meal. Despite the occasion being about my upcoming wedding, my parents showed little interest in Thomas. When we talked about how we met or our future plans, they responded with indifference, offering only a disinterested hmm. Instead, they lavished praise on Melanie during introductions. When my in-laws tried to steer the conversation back to me, my parents would dismiss it, saying, forget about her, let's talk about Melanie. Melanie added, mom, dad, you're praising me too much. Anyway, there's nothing interesting about sis. It was disheartening to see my dysfunctional family dynamic unfold in front of Thomas and my in-laws, their expressions growing stiffer as the evening progressed. After their meal and their focus on Melanie, my family left without offering a single congratulation for our wedding. I was stunned by their lack of acknowledgement, and while Thomas gently comforted me, I never imagined they could be this hurtful. You've had a tough time, Sarah, my in-laws said with sincere warmth. We know you've been through a lot. We're thrilled to have you as part of our family now. Please feel free to rely on us like you would with real parents. Their kind words touched me deeply. I expressed my gratitude and decided it was time to share something I'd been contemplating. I'm considering having a small, intimate wedding, I began, because as you've seen, my parents and sister can be quite unpredictable. I'm concerned about what might happen if we invite acquaintances or friends. Would it be all right if we keep the celebration to just close family? Thomas had already agreed to this plan, and my in-laws responded with a reassuring, of course. I breathed a sigh of relief. With their support, it was settled that our wedding would be a small, family-only affair. However, as the date approached, I was faced with an unexpected and shocking development. I was taken aback when I received an unexpected call from my parents. Melanie is getting married. Her fiancé is here right now. You need to come over. When I arrived, I found my parents, Melanie, and her fiancé waiting. The man looked familiar. Nice to see you, Sarah, he said with a hint of surprise. I didn't realize you were Melanie's sister. I'm surprised too, I responded. His name was Ethan Matthews. 
and he worked for one of my company's business partners. When Melanie mentioned your name, I thought she must be talking about a different Sarah. I never imagined you two could be related. You don't look alike at all, he said with a dismissive tone. I was familiar with Ethan's condescending attitude from work. It was clear he looked down on me because I didn't have a college degree. My parents had always insisted, you should work instead of going to college, so I joined the company right after high school. Meanwhile, Matthews had graduated from a prestigious university and seemed to judge others based on their educational background. The thought of becoming family with someone like him was unsettling, and I felt a strong urge to leave the room as quickly as possible. Congratulations on your wedding, I'll be taking my leave now, I said, trying to exit gracefully. But then Melanie dropped a bombshell. We've decided to hold our wedding on the same day and at the same venue as yours, she announced, with Ethan chiming in. Our wedding will be far grander than yours, he said, a smug smile on his face. I was left stunned, unable to respond to their shocking announcement. Our venue was a large one, capable of accommodating multiple weddings in a single day. Although I had initially preferred a smaller, more intimate setting, Thomas and my in-laws had insisted on this grand venue to make our special day even more memorable. If Melanie and Ethan were planning an extravagant celebration, this venue would be perfect for them. But scheduling their wedding to coincide with ours seemed like a deliberate act of spite. Melanie and Ethan laughed mockingly. Look at her, she's completely frozen in shock. Are you okay? They taunted. I tried to stay composed and asked, What are you talking about? What about our parents and relatives? Which wedding are they supposed to attend? Melanie remained unshaken. Don't worry. Dad, Mom, and all our relatives will be at mine and Ethan's wedding, she said, her expression smug. Our parents immediately began calling our relatives to invite them to Melanie's ceremony. The relatives I had seen before had always favored Melanie, and now they either wanted to avoid conflict or believed her version of events over mine. Despite my attempts to explain that Melanie had announced her wedding date only hours after hours, they dismissed my concerns, calling me immature for even suggesting a conflict. Seeing the smug expressions on my parents, Melanie's, and Aiken's faces, I sighed in resignation and said, All right, fine. I left the house and no one came to see me out. As I closed the door, I could hear their mocking laughter echoing behind me. Back home, I apologized to Thomas and my in-laws for not being able to invite anyone from my side to our intimate wedding, even though I had initially suggested a small guest list. They were understanding and even suggested that with fewer guests, we could make the ceremony more elaborate. I was genuinely appreciative of their support. The wedding day arrived, and as I walked through the lobby, I encountered some of Melanie's relatives heading to her reception. I overheard them whispering, Sarah is such a nasty woman compared to Melanie. She's so plain. I tried to ignore their remarks, focusing instead on making our day as special as possible. Our ceremony went wonderfully. Thomas's talented relatives put on a series of performances that filled the venue with joy and created a truly festive atmosphere. In the midst of our celebration, a commotion erupted as Melanie Eakin, my parents, and Ethan's parents barged into our wedding. Melanie, what's going on? I asked, bewildered. Melanie abruptly shouted, Everyone from Ethan's office is missing today. You must have done something. In reality, Melanie and Ethan's reception hall was nearly empty with many seats unfilled, causing a heated confrontation between my parents and Ethan's parents. My parents angrily criticized them. What a disgrace. Ethan's parents, taken aback and upset by the unwarranted blame, were in a foul mood. Panicked, Melanie falsely claimed to Ethan's parents that our weddings had been deliberately scheduled to overlap due to our strained relationship, leading her to storm into my ceremony, accusing me of sabotage. My wedding was a disaster and yet Sarah's is full of joy. It's infuriating. Melanie exclaimed, her frustration evident. Melanie, please calm down, I pleaded, trying to de-escalate the situation. But Melanie ignored me and took to the microphone, shouting, Attention, everyone. My sister Sarah is the worst person in the world. She's been bullying me since we were children. I rushed to intervene. Melanie stopped this. But she ignored me and continued her tirade. I look so much better in a wedding dress than she does. She's always been jealous of my beauty, and she's just a gloomy, depressing person, Melanie continued, making unfounded claims. Aiken chimed in, supporting her. That's right. Sarah is just a high school graduate and completely useless, he said. He went on, that's why hiring high school graduates is a mistake. 
I graduated from a top university and am extremely talented. I'm even friends with the CEO, so a promotion is a sure thing. Ethan continued to boast about his achievements, adding to the tension. However, when Ethan saw my father-in-law seated at the groom's family table, his face went white. Having been so confident in his boasting and disparaging comments about me, he now trembled in fear. Why is the CEO here? He stammered in disbelief. Matthews, I'm very disappointed in you, my father-in-law said, his voice filled with anger. Why is the CEO here? Ethan asked in a panic. My father-in-law responded, I am the father of the groom. There's your father-in-law. Ethan stood there, stunned and speechless, realizing that my father-in-law was indeed the CEO of his company. The reception venues for our weddings were adjacent, and before our ceremony began, I had overheard Ethan's guests discussing how the wedding dates and times had been intentionally overlapped. Upon learning the truth, Ethan's guests had been so frightened by the CEO's anger that they had fled the scene. No, it's not what you think, sir. I had no idea. It was all Melanie's doing. Ethan pleaded desperately. Melanie looked at him incredulously. There's no way I would sabotage Sarah's wedding. She's an important client's employee. What I said earlier was just a joke. I didn't mean it. Ethan continued with a weak defense, but he was cut off by my father-in-law's stern command. Stop lying. I spoke with your colleague earlier and heard about the derogatory remarks you've made about Sarah, my father-in-law said firmly. Ethan, caught off guard and searching for an excuse, lowered his head in defeat. Sarah is an exceptional woman. She couldn't attend college due to her family's circumstances but began working right after high school and has been dedicated ever since. Despite her challenging situation at home, she has always lived with integrity and kindness. Unlike you, she would never judge or belittle someone based on their education, my father-in-law continued, his praise making me tear up. Ethan stammered, I'm sir, I deeply apologize for, but was interrupted by my father-in-law. You're apologizing to the wrong person. Apologize to Sarah and stay out of my son and his wife's lives from now on. Understood. Yes, sir, Ethan said, trembling uncontrollably. He turned to me, tears in his eyes, and apologized. I'm truly sorry. I've had enough. Please leave, I said firmly. Melanie, bewildered, shouted, What is happening? Why is this going on? Ethan snapped at Melanie. Be quiet. I regret ever marrying you. Melanie's face flushed with rage. What did you just say? She demanded. The two began to argue fiercely, and soon the venue staff arrived to escort Ethan and Melanie out. Their parents, stunned by the chaos, also quickly departed. With the disturbance gone, the remaining guests and I shook off the shock and continued the celebration. The reception resumed with a renewed energy and turned out to be an incredible event. I thanked my father-in-law, saying, Father, I was deeply touched by what you said earlier. Thank you so much. He smiled warmly and replied, I'm sorry for my subordinate's behavior. Thank you, Sarah, for marrying my son. If you ever find yourself in trouble, don't hesitate to reach out. Although Ethan was clearly anxious about facing consequences for his actions, the situation wasn't work-related, so he wasn't demoted. However, his attempts to ingratiate himself with my father-in-law in hopes of career advancement backfired spectacularly when his true character was revealed. Unable to repair his damaged reputation, Ethan could only discuss work-related matters with my father-in-law and was demoted to a lower position within the company. His previous behavior of boasting about being the boss's favorite had led to his isolation. Even his colleagues and subordinates began to avoid him, unwilling to make eye contact. By the end of the day, Ethan was likely just another employee to my father-in-law, especially since he hadn't even known who his son was marrying. News of Ethan's misdeeds quickly spread throughout the company, diminishing his comfort at work. He began to blame Melanie for everything and became violent towards her. Melanie responded by suing Ethan for domestic violence, while Ethan's parents filed a lawsuit against Melanie for ruining the wedding. The situation spiraled into a chaotic divorce drama. Melanie was distraught over Ethan's violence and the lawsuit from his parents. While Ethan and his parents claimed that Melanie and her family had interfered with Ethan's career and ruined the wedding, both sides hired lawyers and prepared for a legal battle but they were so fixated on their own narratives that they ignored any inconvenient truths. As the conflict dragged on, Melanie quickly depleted her funds due to wedding expenses and legal fees, making life increasingly difficult after the divorce. 
She had to move back in with her parents who had once pampered her but now treated her with disdain, labeling her as the disgrace of the family. Although I tried to distance myself, Melanie persistently called and emailed me, detailing her hardships. Despite my efforts to ignore her, I was inundated with hundreds of missed calls and unread emails. I blocked her abusive messages and pleas for money without responding. Soon, my parents began contacting me as well, begging for financial help. Their requests were relentless and annoying, though I couldn't tell if they were trying to cover their own wedding-related expenses or hoping to sway me with their pleas. The volume of their communication grew, becoming a significant nuisance. I blocked their calls and emails too. I anticipated they might visit in person, but they clearly lacked the funds for transportation. Ethan's parents, who should have been practically strangers to me, began persistently asking me to mediate with my father-in-law. They even tried to follow me home recently. I reported their behavior immediately, but they always fled whenever the police arrived. Their attempts to stake out my home became more frequent, prompting more police reports and increased patrols. For now, things have calmed down. In the meantime, I'm creating a loving home with my kind mother-in-law and father-in-law, who I now think of as my true family. I'm experiencing the genuine warmth of a family environment, something I had only heard about before. Here, there's no trace of the daughter-in-law bullying I had previously endured, and I'm discovering what it truly means to have a supportive and affectionate family.